come back for that one as we turn our attention here to a good news story, uh, Secret No More. Uh, today, the Bloom Energy founder and CEO unveiled new details about its much-anticipated Bloom Box. This would power an average U.S. home. 24-7, 365, all your energy needs. Average U.S. home. Think about that. In theory, the invention delivers the kind of clean, cheap energy we have not seen since the final scene of Back to the Future. What are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. Go ahead, quick, get in the car. Uh, the company says these little boxes alone could generate enough electricity indeed to run a house. It's generated its electricity through clean, affordable fuel cell technology, which, as the founder demonstrated, comes from a very simple source. Take a look. The core of our technology simply is sand. Yes, the fuel cells start as sand. The sand baked and cut into squares. You saw those, uh, the cube he was holding, that are turned into basically ceramic. The chips are then painted with the company's special sauce, if you will, special inks that make the, those uh, ceramic plates green on one side and black on the other. They pump oxygen into one side and fuel the other, to the other side, I should say, and that fuel can be natural gas, methane, anything uh, that is a gas, effectively, from a cow's fart to the natural gas uh, of the earth. Uh, one disc alone can power a light bulb. The more discs you stack, the more power you get. Giant boxes can power factories. Imagine the thousands of disks in the servers that Bloom Energy unveiled today. Servers the company says powered in the eBay building which Bloom made its announcement. In other words, the building in which this announcement occurred, the electricity for it coming from Bloom Energy boxes. All in all, phenomenally cool, revolutionary if you think about it. But is the Bloom box the holy grail for energy ridding us of lists of problems, not the least of which are our own energy independence, but foreign oil. You go down the line. Joining us now, Brian Cooley, editor-at-large uh, for CNET Networks, uh, and a man who fashions himself, and rightly so, um, a true... Don't go cow on me. I'm not going to go... <laughs> no, definitely not a cow part. But you, this, is, this is in your wheelhouse. This is technology taking this country forward in its most explicit fashion. This appears to actually work. They're everything, getting electricity. Everything in the future, Dylan, is going to be more and more electrified. Now, this does not apply to being put into cars themselves or into cell phones and iPhones and things like that. It's not for that. It's meant to power the electricity that could charge those products, as well as, of course, run your Station, home. Stationary power. Stationary power. You put on a concrete pad at your home, and it generates power, as you say, out of inexpensive materials, natural gas, methane, whatever you can find. It has just enough reality to it that it doesn't sound like it's the next pie in the sky, which, you know, you can tend to get out of Silicon sure. Valley once in a while. They're saying it'll do power at 8 to 10 cents a kilowatt hour for folks who don't follow the game. That's very cheap electricity. Not crazy cheap, but very inexpensive. And coming from sources that Could are easy to find. How much is a typical kilowatt cost. It could be more like 15 to 18 cents in expensive states. Okay. So you're cutting the price way down and it's a, a, a flex fuel like you say. You can kind of find any gas to go in there and oxygen and the materials like sand and zirconium aren't expensive either so there's no cornering the market on something like palladium or platinum. Some weird sort of metal that you have to come up with yeah. that, no one, that no one can afford. And you get markets that get all twisted over it. My understanding is that this, was, this came to be originally where they're trying to extract oxygen from electricity? Something like that to go to Mars. This was a NASA project to go and set up colonization on Mars to create not just the oxygen that we need, but also electricity to work in an unbelievably low material environment. So that exploration project got canned. Look where it ends up, in our own backyards and in front of our own corporations, perhaps. Would give, a, give any sense, I mean, it's hard to even quantify what this would do, but what this would do to the economic systems and policy relationships on this Earth, wh whether it's this box or any other energy in a suitcase, Yeah. The sourcing of power revolution is what this really changes. That's where it's revolutionary. The sources are no longer a single part of the world feeding out to every other part of the world or a few countries that are rich in oil and a bunch of others that don't have any. The materials used here to both create the device and to power it in use are not hard to find. You get rid of all these bottlenecks, as I see it, around the globe in terms of haves and have-nots who have power.
Africa, all the developing nations right. would have electricity on the ground at a much lower overhead. Even wealthy nations like the U.S. Right. no longer having to go to Canada, the Middle East, Russia to worry about oil and to play that whole game about a relatively rare and vanishing commodity. At the same time, energy states would have real problems. Well, yeah. I mean, for the entire <laughs> they I mean, this thing. They've got to be ready to... Uh, yeah, because this is a very disruptive technology, and like you say, it's been operating for a while now at some uh, test beds at uh, corporations. eBay, where they did this announcement, FedEx, yeah. Coca-Cola, they got one running at the San Francisco airport I just flew out of. So this is real-world stuff. Not widespread, but it's working. Amazing. Brian, thank It'll you. Be very big. Yeah, thanks for the commentary. Thanks, I do appreciate Dylan. it. Again, uh, the box is saying it could be $3,000, by the way, when it's all said and done per person, per box. Uh, now we go to SeaWorld again to the tragedy. This